Kitchen. And I even don't know that answer, but it is really great. A long time ago, there was a girl named Mary, and she was doing something either inside or outside the house. She had brown hair with a dress on. The dress was blue and um, sneakers. And then an angel named Gabriel appeared up and he said, Mary, you are going to have a baby, the son of the living God. His name is, you will name him Jesus and he will be very royal. Something like that. Okay, I'm so happy. Joseph, he had a t-shirt on and sneakers. An angel appeared. Joseph, you're going to have a baby and you should not be afraid, but be excited about it. Then he vanished. An angel came up to me and said, you will mar marry Mary. And then they rode on a donkey all the way to Bethlehem, and then, and then they asked the keeper from the hotel, we, we need a place for the night. And then he said, I have no room. And then they had to go on the barn. During that time, the wise men found a star. One with a tomato and one with a cucumber. It's a veggie tale movie. You know, food don't talk, but this food does talk. With eyes and a mouth and a nose. They remembered a long time ago written, there was going to be a baby written down, written and then a scar in the sky which show when he was being born. We should follow the star and bring gifts to Jesus. Let's go ride some camels. So they took a journey over oceans and seas, long lands, plains, plains, mountains, they had to go so far just to see this baby. The wise guys brought Jesus gold, frankincense, and mud. That night, an angel appeared to the shepherds while they were watching their flock of sheep. They like wear a bag on their head. It was like they like cut it open like so he could see on their face. In their hand they have like a little, like a cane, yeah. like old people. It has wings. It does have wings. It does. The angel Gabriel said, do not be afraid. There's a new um, baby named Jesus by that star over there. And then the shepherd said, we have nothing to wear. Why would we go see a king like this? God doesn't care. You can go just with nothing. They rejoice so happy that they ran there. The table, it smelled like lemonade. They used to hay for like a little crib. He's so precious. <sighs> His little blue eyes. Baby Jesus, you are handsome, cute, and beautiful. Jesus was supposed to be born. God sent him to earth so he can live on earth too, so he can help people out and stuff. Jesus is the king of Christmas. Then they moved into a little house. A little house. It was so little. Tidy thing. It's so tidy. This is like the worst video. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Merry Christmas. Welcome to Fellowship Community Church. If you would stand up. We've already heard a lot from the kids, but uh, we need some help from the kids singing as well. We're going to sing some old carols together. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive.
Have a seat. Well, Merry Christmas. It is so good to see each and every one of you here. We've had two Christmas Eve services. This is our second Christmas Eve service, and it is just like being gathered around, uh, like uh, just in a living room, kind of hanging out with family today as we celebrate uh, the risen Lord's birth. And we're so excited that you're here with us here at FCC. Uh, we're really excited about something here at FCC, especially during the Christmas holidays. And our church has been preparing itself uh, for a wonderful thing that's going to happen tonight, and that's our Christmas uh, Eve offering. And this all goes to missions. And so uh, one of the things that we value here is that we believe that the gospel is something to be shared. It's to be shared around the world and across the street. And we're so excited about all that God is doing uh, through the generous giving of this church as we try to focus on the kingdom and to see what God is doing. Uh, tonight, uh, we're going to take up that offering, and we have a video for you to watch because we're so excited about all that God is doing. So go ahead and turn your attention to the screens uh, to see what God is doing across the street and around the world. The birth of Jesus reminds us of the greatest gift ever given, His life on the cross for us. This Christmas, we are collecting a special offering so that others may know of His gift. God has given us the privilege of impacting not only the Roanoke Valley, but also the world. By making a donation to the Christmas offering, you can help feed students, clothe the homeless, and provide school supplies for hundreds of teachers and thousands of students. Your gift will help share the gospel with a Turkish Muslim, teach the Bible to Syrian refugees, rescue girls from human trafficking, and train Liberian pastors. As you prepare your hearts in prayer for this special offering, know that every gift counts towards our God-sized goal of $75,000. 100% of the funds will be used to reach the Roanoke Valley and beyond. This special Christmas offering will be held at all Christmas Eve services. Online giving is also available through December at fcclife.org. If you would like to gift a donation to a loved one, cards are available online and at guest services. There's no greater gift than the one God has given to us in His Son, Jesus. Will you help share this gift with the Roanoke Valley and the rest of the world? We're so excited about that we can partner together to see great things happen. And we're so excited that you guys are here tonight. So many of our family, they make a, this a part of their Christmas Eve traditions, and we're so excited. If you've traveled for a uh, good ways away just to be with family, we're so excited you've uh, actually chosen to spend it with uh, us here tonight. Uh, when you walked in, you got one of these, and it's our worship program, and if you worship with us on a regular 
basis. You kind of know what to do that, and you can go ahead and fill that out. When you leave, you can put it in the boxes that are located around our worship center. But if you're a first-time guest, and we missed you when you were coming in at the first-time guest tent, at the end of this service, what we would love for you to do is to go ahead and fill that connection out if you would for us. And at the end of the service, go over to guest services, and uh, we'd love to put a gift in your hand and say thank you so much for celebrating the birth of Christ with us and making this a part of your family tradition. Um, one of the cool things that I love about this church and being a part of the, of the staff and the pastoral staff here is this, is that God is doing things all the time in our midst, and we choose to get together each week and to corporately worship Him in spirit and truth. But that's not all that we do. Uh, if you'll look in your programs, you'll see some other things that happens here at FCC. We really believe in community here. We believe about doing life together. We want to be together and take care of one another. And so we have life groups. And not only life groups for us that we believe that that's really important, but also for our children and for our students because we believe the next generation is absolutely so important. But we just don't care for one another. We have such a heart for the gospel here that we want to see that gospel expand and expand all over the world. And that's why tonight we're coming together to sacrificially give for the advancement of the gospel. I want to read you a scripture tonight, and it's out of the book of Philippians. And when I think of this, I think of this church, and I think about what God is doing all the way around the world. And it says this, I thank my God every time I remember you in all my prayers for all of you. I always pray for joy, with joy, because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day into now. Being confident of this, that he who begun a good work in you will carry it out to completion in the day of Jesus Christ. We believe at FCC that God has begun a good work and he will continue to carry that on. And this is the confidence that we have. We have the confidence in this, is that Jesus Christ is not just for Christmas, but Jesus Christ is our very hope, our very breath, our very life. And that's what we believe the risen Savior is today. And so today, we partner together because it takes all of us to see the gospel going forth. And so today, if you're a visitor with us today, feel no pressure to give. But we as a family, we're ready to give. We're ready to give for the advancement of the kingdom. And so this is our time that we get to honor Jesus Christ with our giving today. As our ushers come forward, as we receive this offering, we receive it in pure joy. We receive it in humility. We receive it in such a way that God would choose to use us to make his name great among the world. It is such a privilege and an honor to be together tonight and to celebrate Jesus' family. So will you pray with me as we give? Father, we thank you for the blessed hope of the gospel, for the message, Lord, of Jesus Christ. Father, for the opportunity to come and sacrificially give for the advancement of the kingdom. Thank you, God, that we can come together as families. We can come together as friends tonight. We can come together as honored guests and to worship you as the sovereign Lord of all the kingdom. Father, we give you all the devotion tonight on this Christmas Eve as we remember your birth so long ago. We pray these things in your powerful name. Wise men. 
thing to know a God who actually wants to spend time with us. I know you guys are looking forward to spending time with family the next few days. Take a seat. We're going to finish off our series, The First Noel, looking at what old hymns mean with Silent Night today. Well, thank you, Wes, and thank you, Pastor Kevin, and thank you for being in the service. How, how many of you have already had a wonderful Christmas season, family get-togethers, exchanging of gifts? You've already had some fun stuff going on. How many of you? All right, most of you, good. And if not, I'm hoping it gets even better for you if you haven't celebrated a whole lot that Christ has come. You know, uh, we had a get-together at our home uh, last night out in Hollins, and uh, we've been hearing over the last few years, uh, Roanoke County Fire Department, EMS, uh, we have guys that ride around. Santa comes around on the back of a fire engine. And uh, so we heard him coming up Shadwell, and he turned on to Tinkerview, and so we knew that we had a few minutes to get the kids out there. And so the fire engine passed by. We waited out on the street, and uh, we're waving to Santa Claus, and he's coming by, and he's throwing out bags of candy to the kids. And so we had gotten several bags. We picked them up off the ground, and I'm like, I looked at Santa Claus, and I'm like, Hey, Merry Christmas. Thank you so much. And I turned to walk to talk to some neighbors. All of a sudden, I felt this whack on the side of my head. <laughs> Santa sort of brained me with a bag of candy. And I, I told somebody in the last service that works with Roanoke County Fire EMS, I said, I'm suing Roanoke County. He said, it's all volunteers. <laughs> and uh, so we had a good time about that. But we're glad to have you in the service. Excited about what God wants to do. This is a very family-friendly service. We've got one of our families that's going to come up and read scripture for us. J.D. and Christy Shanks and uh, their kids are coming up and uh, going to read the scriptures to us. Now, I wanted to give them a few seconds head start, but I'd like to invite, this is going to be like old school children's church. We're going to invite, I'm going to hand the microphone to them in just a few minutes and ask them to read the passage of scripture. But if you've got, as a parent, Anywhere from a three-year-old on up through fifth grade, we'd love to have them up on stage with us. Now, you can just send them on. You can come with them, whatever you want. But we're just going to sit here and we're going to listen to them read the scripture. So come on, kids. We need you up here. Moms and dads, send your kids up here. Come with them, whatever. we got to have some kids up here because I'm going to have some interaction with them. Oh, great. Good. we got one coming here. Come on, kids. Come on up here. Pastor Kevin's going to help you and we get you up on stage here. This is great. If you'll sit right here in front of these um, poinsettias, that'll be great. And instead of facing toward out in the congregation, if you'll turn around this way so we can listen to uh, J.D. and Christy and their kids uh, read the passage of Scripture, that'll be wonderful. All right. Any others? We want to give you a few seconds. And um, the passage, by the way, as they're coming up here and they're getting seated if you've got a Bible with you, fine, or if you've got your uh, Bible app on your phone, the passage of Scripture that they're going to be reading, and you can just listen along if you want, is Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 16. It is the uh, typical story of that very first Christmas. All right, kids, what a wonderful group. And uh, I'm going to give this to J.D., and if you all will go ahead and read this passage of Scripture, would you welcome the Shanks family up here on stage? Thank you. Merry Christmas. Um, and there were there shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. And the angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. Thank you, guys. We appreciate that so much. Would you express your appreciation to them? And you all can go on out and sit with your family. But kids, I want you to stay put because I want to interact with you for just a few minutes. 
Because I've got some questions, and I want to go back in a, a, a few of the passages, uh, the scripture text that we looked at over the last few minutes, and you heard. I want to ask you some questions. First question is this, when is it quietest around your house? All right, when is it quiet? Watching a movie, it's quiet at your house. Somebody else, raise your hand. and I'll, when's everyone it? Is sleeping. When everyone is sleeping. That's, it, it should be quiet then. Okay, when you're the only one, all right. Yes, you got an answer? When everybody is out of the house, it's really, really quiet. Okay, one more th response. Tonight, it's really, really quiet. Do you think you could hear a pin drop? No. Okay, all right. But it is quiet, all right. <laughs> Now, let me read you uh, the passage of Scripture. I want to go back to verse 8, and I want us to think about this. And in the same region there were shepherds out in their field, keeping watch over their flock by night. We, uh, we went with a group from FCC back a few weeks ago uh, to Bethlehem and Jerusalem and the Holy Land and the, and the country of Israel. And one of the things that we saw, and you'll see on the screen, is these are the fields... That those shepherds were in watching their sheep. Now, I wish so much that we could have been there at nighttime because I'd love to have looked at the stars and seen how quiet it was. But those shepherds were watching over their sheep. And all of a sudden, there is this interruption that we discover because they have this angel that says these words down in verse 11. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And they begin to celebrate. Now, how many of you have a, a, a little brother or a little sister? How many of you have a little brother or a little sister? You okay, you got a little brother, a little sister? All right, some of you, I need to you to respond. What's the most enjoyable thing about having a little brother or a little sister? All right, what? When he talks. How does he talk? Oh, he gives good hugs and really cute. All right, it's good when babies can be cute. All right, you have a baby sister, and what do you enjoy the most about your baby sister? When you play together, you have a good time. All right, one more person. When they snuggle with you, that's one. Is this your little sister? And that's your little brother over there. And you're snuggling right now, aren't you? That's cute. Thank you. We appreciate that so much. So when the angel says this about Jesus being born, it says, Today is born in the city of David, which of course is Bethlehem, a Savior who is Christ the Lord. He's the one that came to rescue us. And we think about it this season of the year, his birth. We think about it Easter, what he did for us on the cross and his resurrection uh, that occurred in his life. So, and then the last thing that I want to look at is uh, found down in verses 15 and 16. It says, when the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they did this. They went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. Now, I got, I got a really interesting question for you. You could just evaluate in your own. How many of you would define yourselves as really fast runners? That you can run really fast. Can you give me an example of that? Can you just run from right here on the stage, right over to there on the stage? Just do it real quick. No, I, I just need one volunteer. No, I don't need too many kids. Run. All right, run. Can you just run real fast? Ooh, you are fast. And run back. Oh, you are really, really fast. It, wouldn't you say he's fast? And when the angel said to these shepherds, it says in this passage of Scripture, they made haste. Their silence was interrupted. They ended up hearing about the birth of Jesus, the one who would be the Savior of the world, and they made haste, and they went and found baby Jesus. Now, kids, I appreciate so much, and I know this congregation appreciates so much you're being up here and you're answering my questions and you're being a part of the service because we love families here at FCC. And so, congregation, would you express your appreciation to these kids? And moms and dads, this is what I'm going to ask you to do so we can get the right kids back with the right parents. If the parents will stand 
as the kids come back to, down to join you. Would you do that? You, you have no idea where your parents are? Well, they'll, they'll come and find you. I guarantee you. Okay, good. All right. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Isn't it great having kids in our service? Such a lot of fun. And let's see, since we're looking at the classic Christmas carol, Silent Night, let's see how quiet we can be. That's pretty good. You did a good job. And I want you to know the backstory for Silent Night. This is a uh, Christmas carol that has been translated in over 300 different languages. Uh, everyone from uh, Bing Crosby to Dolly Parton to Beyonce have sung Silent Night. Uh, the story is the country, uh, the setting is the country of Austria. And there was a young priest by the name of Joseph Moore who wrote the lyrics of Silent Night in the year 1816. And then later in 1818, Franz Gruber uh, actually wrote and composed the music. And so the two together... Uh, sort of gave birth to what we know as the song, the Christmas carol, Silent Night. And it was first performed on Christmas Eve, 1818. And it wasn't accompanied by the organ because the organ was broken in that particular church. It was accompanied by guitar. And this actually happens to be the 200th anniversary of the Christmas carol, Silent Night. This is a pretty memorable occasion. And I want us to take just a few moments to look at the lyrics of this song. Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright. Round yon virgin, mother and child, holy infant, so tender and mild. I, I had no idea when it says round yon virgin, mother and child. I, I thought, it, was it like this glorified baby bump? No, that's not the case. When it's talking about a round that virgin mother and child is talking about the calmness, the bright. And sleep in heavenly peace. Sleep in heavenly peace. Second verse. Silent night, holy night. Shepherds quake at the sight. You'd shake too if you had the appearance of an angel coming to you. Glory stream from heaven afar. Heavenly hosts sing alleluia. Christ the Savior is born. Christ the Savior is born. The reason that he came to earth was to save us from our sins. Verse 3, silent night, holy night, son of God loves pure light. Radiant beams from thy holy face with the dawn of redeeming grace. Jesus, Lord, at thy birth, even though they had such humble beginnings of Mary and Joseph in the birth of Jesus, he was born Lord of humanity, Lord of the universe, Lord of all creation. When uh, we went to the Holy Land back a few weeks ago, there um, was, you know, uh, we visited the shepherd's fields, but we also went into one of those caves. Typically, we think of uh, the whole setting of a, a manger scene of being in a stable and there'd be this wooden sort of feeding trough. But more typically, it's probably something along these lines that there was this hewn out in limestone, this, th this carved out piece of rock that they would place the the, the feed for the animals, and in this instant, Mary and Joseph took out the, any feed that was there, and they placed that hay, and then Jesus was laid in those swaddling clothes. If you've ever been inside of a cave, if you've ever been what we technically call spelunking, you realize how quiet it can be inside a cave. There's this quietness. It seems almost to be deafening, and I, I envisioned that very first Christmas night that, that, that there was this calm and quiet and it was interrupted by these angels that said to these shepherds that Jesus would be born. This is a theme that we find throughout scriptures that there's to be this silence, there's to be this solitude and uh, the passage of scripture, Psalms 62 verse 1 
gives us a classic understanding of what the Bible says about silence and what it can do for us has the potential of accomplishing in our lives. I'd like for us to read this passage of Scripture out loud, so if you would, read off the screens. For God alone my soul waits in silence. From Him comes my salvation. The uh, shepherds, they had their uh, silence interrupted. You know what prohibits us from really having the silence and solitude and the reflection that we need is sometimes the busyness of our schedules. I'm glad you took the opportunity to come and be a part of this service because it shows that you want to reflect on the true meaning and understanding of Christmas. And in the midst of our quietness and in the midst of our reflection, God can do His work of salvation if we'll simply think through the whole reason that we celebrate Christ, the Savior, is born. He wants to have a relationship with us. Our sin stands in the way and he came to provide for us and bridge that gap between a holy God and us as sinful human beings. That's why he came to earth. In our lives, we, uh, we have to seek some of that silence. I, I, I'm going to encourage you to do this either later on tonight that after all the toys are put together and all the gifts are wrapped and all the cooking's done and everybody else goes to bed to spend a few moments in quiet reflection of what the Christmas season is all about. In fact, I would ask you to go back and read Luke chapter 2 verses 8 through 16. If you can't do it tonight or you fall asleep when you're trying to do so, then get up in the morning and maybe before the kids get up, before everybody stirs about their day's activities and everybody wishes it, want everyone else a Merry Christmas and the ra- unwrapping of gifts, take a few moments to reflect on Luke 2, verses 8 through 16. The challenge is pretty great for us in the chaos and the busyness of our schedules at this Christmas season of the year, but I do want you to take this challenge is to take the next few moments in the quietness to watch the screens and think about and contemplate the real reason for Christmas.
extinguish your candle. Even though we go our separate places, and even though we'll go to our different traditions and our different families, his light is not extinguished. He is the light of the world, and it lives within us. As was mentioned before, we are for you, and we are for families here, and we pray that you have an absolutely wonderful Christmas. Now, next week, we will not have corporate services here at FCC on the 30th at www.fcclife.org. We have a Faith at Home experience, and you can follow the prompts there. One of the things that we do here as a church is we practice faith at home. We believe that's where it begins. It's parents pass on uh, the faith to the next generation. And so that's there for your enjoyment. And so we'll be worshiping next week, but not corporately. We'll be worshiping in each of our families. And so we invite all of you uh, to go ahead and, and join in that experience. But we'll be here the next week, and we'll start off January. It's going to be awesome. God's got a great 2019 coming up, and we're so excited. FCC, Merry Christmas from our family to yours. Have an absolutely wonderful Christmas holiday. Merry Christmas. <laughs>